Are you totally confused about the potential heart benefits versus risks from hormone therapy? Well, it's a wild, wild ride out there on the internet and you might be seeing both perspectives. If you're confused about this, which many women are, I am here to break down the myths and tell you the real scientific evidence-based facts about who benefits from estrogen in terms of heart protection at menopause, why that works, and if you should take hormone therapy yourself. So that's what we're gonna be discussing in this video, so please stick around. For the very best up-to-date evidence-based menopause advice, not just menopause, but perimenopause, hormone therapy, non-hormone therapy, everything at midlife, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel here, Health by Heather Hirsch. It's been almost a year since I officially launched my channel and we have already grown to over 3,500 subscribers. Thank you all to all of you for subscribing and continuing to share these videos that you find really informational to friends, family, coworkers, anyone who could potentially benefit from this. This community is really growing and thriving and I'm really excited to have you a part of it and to see it continue to grow. Now also great places to follow me for more information and to get more engages over on my Instagram account linked up here and that's at hormone.health.doc. I let you guys weigh in on a lot of these topics, suggest topics, and it's a great place to message me if you want more information on a certain topic or where to find more resources. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch and I am the clinical program director of the Menopause and Midlife Clinic at the Brigham and Women's Hospital where I'd love to see you as a patient because I really can't not use this platform for direct medical advice. This really is for education only. However, if you would like to see me via telemedicine or if you're in the Northeast, I will link the number to my clinic in the description bar below. You can always call my office there and my staff will help to see if I can get you in the office. Again, I have plenty of resources. If you can't see me, again, you can always go to menopause.org. It's the best place to find a NAMS practitioner. That means they're certified by the North American Menopause Society to help you on your menopause journey. I also have an amazing course, which I will talk about again at the end of my videos because it is a great place to feel really confident and comfortable about everything menopause related. I'm also on faculty at Harvard Medical School and I'm so lucky to be able to teach the next generation of medical students and residents all the things on women's midlife health that we are learning that are now pertinent in 2021 and will be going beyond. I also host my podcast, Women's Health by Heather Hirsch, also linked in the description bar below, for which you can find tons of other free resources and topics on information. I have lots of really cool guests there, so please check that out as well. In today's video, I'm gonna break this down into three parts, and the three parts are as follows. Number one, is estrogen really cardioprotective? And if so, for whom does that apply to? Number two, what is the physiology or the science behind that statement? So you know I'm just not saying this <laughs> just on my own soapbox. And lastly, number three, knowing this information, should you take hormone therapy? So let's go ahead and dive right in. Before doing so, and if you wanna engage with this community, comment below, tell me, did your doctor talk to you about the heart benefits of hormone therapy? If so, how did that conversation go? I'm interested to know if you did learn about this or if you didn't. My intuition is maybe not, but I would love to hear your experiences. All right, so number one, who benefits from the use of estrogen replacement postmenopausally in terms of heart health? Well, there's actually a ton of scientific literature, data and research on this topic. It just gets so muddled. The, the information gets so muddled between the media as well as, and I don't have enough time to talk about it, the social, political and cultural norms that comes along with midlife and menopause and how the media likes to discuss women's health, again, particularly at midlife. Now to learn a little bit more about this, I'm gonna take you all the way back almost 20 years ago to 2002 when the Women's Health Initiative or the WHI, which I will call for short, initially released its results from their study using oral Premarin for women who had a hysterectomy, meaning you could take estrogen only if you don't have your uterus, or who took oral Prempro for women who did have an intact uterus. 
What you must know about this study is the average age of the women in this study was about 63 and a half, whereas we know the average age of menopause in the United States is 51. And P.S. I see many patients who are much earlier than age 51 for menopause, be it surgical menopause, premature ovarian insufficiency, and early menopause. Now, when they lumped that group of women together in the WHI from age 50 to 79, they did not find any cardio protection. And the media reported this too. Not only did they not find cardio protection, but that there was an increased risk of cardiovascular events. This is sort of what started the confusing, it's good, it's bad, it's good, it's bad, um, sort of pendulum. Now, years later, in 2007, 2013, 2017, and I think as well in the summer of 2020, what they did is they did some post hoc analysis, that means they took all that huge amount of data and actually revisited it. And they looked at it by age. So they looked at women who are within 10 years of menopause, women who are 10 to 20 years out of menopause, and women who are 20 to 30 years out of menopause. And what they found is that if you started hormone therapy, which is an estrogen only if you have a hysterectomy or an estrogen plus a progesterone if you do have your intact uterus, if you started that regimen within 10 years of menopause, that actually women had overall less cardiovascular events and they lived longer. Now the living longer part is important because the leading cause of death in the United States is by and far heart disease. So living longer means that there was some cardio protection. Another way to say this is uh, women who are aged 50 to 60, 60 to 70, and 70 to 79. They didn't have anyone who was 80 in this study. However, personally, I like the 10 years from la your last menstrual period much better because this is much more accurate. We know that you could be menopausal at age 53, 54, or you could be 47. You could even be much younger, again, in earlier or premature menopause. And so the age from your last menstrual period is really important. So again, I want to really reinstate that. They found that in the women's health study many times over looking at the post hoc analysis from the original results that came out in 2002. Then there was a big trial called the KEEPS trial. You don't need to know these fancy names, but the KEEPS trial or the Kronos Early Estrogen Prevention Study was looking at younger women who took hormone therapy. And again, found the same types of outcomes, that they had less overall cardiovascular events, which includes heart attacks, and that they lived longer, they had lower mortality. Now, this is really important because what we do know is that women who are within that 10 to 20 year mark had a little bit of a null effect in terms of heart health. Didn't have the protective benefits that women had when they were within 10 years of menopause, but it didn't really seem to harm them either. If you are particularly two years out of menopause and then you start hormone therapy, not that's when you continue it, and I'll come back to that point, then there can be some more risks in terms of cardiovascular events from the use of estrogen or the estrogen progesterone. Now again, this does not mean that you cannot at all, at ever, ever, ever take hormone therapy if it's been 10 years since your last menstrual period. That's where a conversation on risks and benefits just differs and priorities, health outcomes, and symptoms really matters and you should be seeing a menopause specialist or someone who's really knowledgeable in hormone therapy. So I get that question from you guys a lot. It's been 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. Does this mean that I am cut off? No, it's just a slightly different conversation. Ideally, for you and for all the women who are going through menopause, we don't make them wait 10, 12, 15 years to talk about their symptoms and their menopause. We should be having these conversations, women, when they enter menopause and especially within 10 years of menopause. Again, the Women's Health Study was just a study and it was designed actually to try and get more younger women, but women who are really 
in their early 50s and entering menopause are particularly busy. So they just ended up with a slightly older cohort. The next question I get a lot about this is how long can I take hormone therapy for or what happens if I turn 60 or what happens if it's 11 years and I'm on my hormone therapy. I have a great video on how long you can take hormone therapy, which I will link here, which goes into great, great detail. But the Cliff Notes version of that is that if you start within 10 years, if you start in that window, a lot of people call it, you'll hear it calls that on, you know, the internet and blogs and etc. or in books. If you start within that time frame, nothing magical happens when you turn 60 or 65. And again, the benefits stay, the heart benefits stay. Moving on to point number two, what is the science behind this? What is the physiology? What's going on in our bodies? Well, there's a wonderful trial called the Elite Trial. And what this study did is looked at the cardiovascular system for women who took estrogen and or progesterone within 10 years of menopause and then later. What they found was again, there was actually a healthier arterial system. And you remember our arteries and vessels surround our heart and that's what provides blood flow to that vital organ. Interestingly, estrogen is a vasodilator. It releases nitric oxide, which opens up your vessels. Now that sounds really good for your heart, right? Your heart wants good blood flow. Your heart needs all that healthy oxy oxygenation. <laughs> and so to have the estrogen be really a, a subtlety in helping that endothelial lining, that arterial lining, those little vessels surrounding your heart, the vessels actually that go up to your brain and supply your kidneys and et cetera, those are all really good mechanisms to keep them overall very healthy. We also know that estrogen has some anti-inflammatory properties, and that is another reason why we're keeping that inflammation down. Now, if you ask me, there might be some indirect reasons why there also is less cardiovascular disease. That could be simply not having hot flashes, which are a constriction of those vessels. That could be sleeping better, getting better quality of sleep and not being woken up from your hot flashes. That could just be an improvement in your productivity and how you're thriving in your life and the choices that you are making. So there's lots of both direct science and physiology. And there's also, of course, that indirect a positive benefit that you're getting from hormone therapy by helping you feel good and not be symptomatic anymore. Now, there is a difference if you introduce estrogen one and particularly two decades. So we're talking about 20 years since your body has last seen its own estrogen. Remember that your own body's estrogen came from your ovaries, which shut down at menopause. When it's introduced one and definitely two years postmenopausally, it can just be a little pro-inflammatory. Think about it. Those arterial vessels or that endothelial vessels, those are like, what is the scientific term for the pipes of our heart and our the rest of our body they've had 20 years where they may have stiffened they may have gotten calcifications you know more years go on of either poor diet or insulin resistance from things like diabetes or they've taken a beating from things like hypertension etc and then we introduce estrogen and it can be a little bit of a pro-inflammatory uh, mechanism at that point. Now, again, remember I said initially it's an anti-inflammatory. So again, it really just kind of depends how those pipes are when you start your estrogen. So think about, you know, if it's been 20 years since your body's last seen estrogen, those pipes have changed. They've maybe gotten a little rusty. And when you introduce estrogen at that point, it may not be so favorable. And that unfavorability is what can cause a predisposition to little clots that form that can then break off and clot, create a clog either in your arteries that surround your heart or up to your brain which can cause transient ischemic attacks or strokes. So again the timing is really important and that's just a little bit about the physiology and science of why. Lastly on to point number three should you take hormone therapy for heart protection? Well, I have to say, of course, I am a little bit biased in answering this question because I think about this, read about this, study about this, and answer this question every single day. Here's what we do know. Right now, hormone therapy is not FDA approved to be a mechanism of primary prevention for cardiovascular disease, i.e., you may remember when we gave everyone aspirin for primary prevention. We talk about, you know, things like not smoking for primary prevention. Primary prevention means you don't have any heart issues yet, but we're doing something 
to decrease your risk of getting those further. It is not FDA approved for that indication. And clearly if you're watching this video or if you're just watching this video and you kind of already know this and it's just sinking in, you already know there's lots of controversy about estrogen and its role in heart protection. Again, in summary, I do want to say though that there is a lot of data that there is good cardiovascular protection for women who start within 10 years of menopause. So certainly if you have symptoms, if you're symptomatic and you're a good candidate for hormone therapy, then it is really also helpful to know that actually this is cardioprotective if you're starting it within 10 years of menopause. This is going to have a lot of heart benefits that you can't feel. You're going to feel that reduction in hot flash. You're going to feel that reduction in, you know, that your insomnia or your mood or your mental changes that are happening at menopause. But you're not going to feel those heart changes, but they're happening and that is also really wonderful wonderful to know. Besides that, there's a lot of other things that are silently happening like your bone health and your brain health and your bladder health, but we'll do a whole other video on those if you guys found this video interesting. But what if you have no symptoms at all, no symptoms at all, and you just want to take hormone therapy? Well, I was once doing a grand rounds and someone raised their hand and asked me that question. Would you counsel your patients on taking hormone therapy if they don't have any symptoms at all? And that really is an individual choice. That's something where I get to sit down with you and discuss. That's something where I look at your medical history. That's something where I really discuss what your goals and your priorities are. And even though it's not FDA indicated for that, it certainly is a conversation that we can have and that you could have with your doctor. But remember, it doesn't carry that FDA indication. So that would be using it, you know, that would be using it off label and maybe even considered somewhat controversial. But when you look at that data, when you see it, when you see patients day in and day out like I do, it is really a very interesting clinical question. The American Heart Association or the AHA rele recently released their 2020 scientific statement that menopause itself is a novel risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Because that loss of estrogen can change our arteries, can change our insulin resistance, it can change our metabolism and etc. So this conversation is not over and there is going to be more that comes out in the next two, five, 10, 30 years of lifetime and this pendulum might swing again. I am so glad that you came to this video though and you got some really good facts. I have a whole playlist too as well on hormone therapy, menopausal symptoms, so you guys can check those out if you want to take a really nice dive. If you want to take a super deep dive, again, I highly recommend my course, The Complete Guide to Menopause. Y'all, I've had about 100 women go through this course and they just email me with thanks and praise for how much it's really helped them make a decision. For example, let's say your doctor said, here, take the patch, goodbye, nice to see you, and you just feel so confused. You've kept that patch in your bathroom and you haven't touched it in about six months and you don't know what to do, take this course. It's gonna answer all the questions you have on is hormone therapy right for me? What are the real risks and benefits? It goes deep into all the different types of symptoms like insomnia, hair loss, weight, and my good friend Kim Slog, who also has a YouTube channel, which I will link in the description bar below, did a whole lesson on weight. It's about 30 minutes long. It's really amazing. All the types of questions that you have, if you want a really deep dive, check out my course. The first lesson is free, so go check it out. So hopefully I've done a good job giving you the real truth on the cardioprotective effects of estrogen replacement within 10 years of menopause. If you like this video, if you found it interesting, if you found it totally different than what you initially thought or what your doctor told you or what your friend or sister or colleague told you, send it to them, share it, spread the word. I am so thankful again to see this community grow and this channel grow. It is really my mission to give you all the education that you want about midlife and menopause. So please, again, feel free to comment below. Let me know what else you'd like to hear about. And thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you guys next Friday. Bye everyone.